to another video. Uh, in this video we're going to take another look at Sparkplug. Now I did a, a video on Sparkplug previously and we talked about the protocol, now it works and uh, the various messages. And What I want to go through today is a, a selection of flows that you might find useful if you're working with Sparkplug and these are flows that I created when I was learning about Sparkplug. Uh, they're not completely bug free, they're not completely finished but they are actually useful. I still find them useful when I have to go back and and take a look at spark plug. Um, now there's this node here, this sorry, this flow here um, is disabled. Uh, I created this one just to learn about the various um, nodes. These these are the spark plug nodes that I'm using here. Um, I'll show you the or I'll put a link to the actual name of the actual uh, nodes in the description below, so you can actually install it. Uh, I'd better still I just show you here okay there it is there it's a small clock uh, plus uh, collection of nodes uh, the one I'm actually really going to be using in this is the input node and very useful node this because what it does it takes um, spark plug messages and it actually puts out a JSON object so you can actually use it and there is a flow here the using it basically for translating between the Google protocol buffers messages and actual uh, JSON formatted messages so if if you struggling getting your head around the protocol buffers which I did and I must admit uh, I found very confusing um, it's quite refreshing this one because you just get the output from this node directly as a JSON uh, object and I'll show you that in, in the flow and I say there is a flow there that will actually will act as a bridge so you could take your spark plug messages and actually output them on a different topic um, as JSON formatted messages so we've got this first flow here which I don't use um, and it's disabled uh, I created it so I could actually test out some of these devices and things but I, I, I say I I didn't really pursue it uh, much further than that um, but I left it there because you might find it useful but here we've got a, a data collection node and what I'm doing here is collecting data from the test broker testmosquito.org and basically I'm just looking for any spark plug messages here now if you're doing this yourself in on, on your network then you'll probably be more specific and you'd actually use the group here rather than what well, I just put a straight wildcard there um, but even on your network if you use this it probably be okay because you probably have only got one group whereas on this test broker there's, there's several groups and uh, you'll see that in a second now this node here is basically for my local network you see it here so this is really what you would be using and not not this one here so you could just go there and disable it but they both go through the same function nodes here to process the messages and what it does is display the messages and let me show you where, what they look like ah, and this is what they look like I was on the right screen earlier it basically gives you the group it gives you the edge nodes and it gives you the devices and you can see here there's there's actually various groups here there's another one here and there's another one here it's flashing because they they are they're changing the data is coming in and it's changing now on your in your setup you'd only see a, normally see a single group here but you'd see the actual devices, you see the edge nodes, you see the devices so basically that's what this data collection node does here uh, sorry data collection flow does there no it stores the data it's picking up in uh, a flow object, you can see it here and we 
can see at the edge nodes and we can see the actual devices themselves and the metrics all down here. Now you can see I've got several groups. Now it feeds the data out over here and that comes in into the monitor node and that basically looks into the data in a bit more detail and this is the display for that and you can see here we've got the group, we've got the edge nodes and we've got the status whether it's online or not and how many metrics it's got So it basically gives you an overview and here are all the metrics coming down here. Okay. Um, and now we got the spark plug logger. Now this I I used and I found very useful. So we just we're still just using this node here. This, this node here, we're just taking the data and we're actually logging it. And I log it here to a a file. And the reason I did this is because basically I wanted some test data, and so then I can replay that test data onto my own network. So again, you might find that, that useful if you want to monitor your network over a period of time. You just log all the data into a file and then you can replay it back onto your network just by reading that file out. And this is the flow that does that, takes the data from the file and puts it back out. I put it into an actual display. And there it goes out and it goes out to the link one in which basically is the data collection one here goes into here see it going into the replay node as I say these flows were created f for while I was actually um, working with Sparkplug trying to get to understand it and Now, I might have sent a little bit confused there because I was um, because I mentioned earlier about republishing and I thought I created a separate flow for republishing but I didn't actually put it as part of this flow here so you can see here I've got a topic rename and all I do is I take in the, the topics that are coming and I split them up and I actually put a prefix them with a, a different name so I'm going to prefix them with a spark plug rather than the SP version 1B or whatever it is and send them back out onto the network using an MQTT node so that way I can actually pick them up. Now useful this because all of the tools the, the conventional tools that you have for monitoring MQTT networks don't like the Google protocol buffer um, message format so they like JSON so you can actually use your normal tools uh, normal tools for monitoring the spark plug network just by republishing it on it onto a different topic so you might find this very useful on your on your network this one here I say you don't have to have all the rest of it in the logging bits you just really need the renaming as I say I thought I had created a separate flow for that but I didn't I put it on there Okay, um, I think that's all I really want to go through here on this. Is uh, uh, be grateful to your feedback if you actually find these these flows useful uh, when you're working with Sparkplug. And I say, uh, free to develop them further if you want to develop them further, as all the uh, flows uh, are basically open source, so you can do what you want with them. Okay, um, I think that's it for now. Uh, until the next time, bye.